Welcome to week 11, everyone. This week we're going to be discussing walking as a method and considering what walking does in conversation with pedagogical documentation. So this week we'll be revisiting the Triggs, Irwin, and Lego article, as well as the BC Learning Framework, the section on pedagogical documentation. So by Saturday at 11.55 p.m., revisit and, or sorry, visit and read through the Walking Lab website, watch the short film called The Red Line Labyrinth, and post a link to Portfolio Entry 9. By Sunday at 11.55 p.m., participate in your group's one-hour virtual collaboratory, respond to one other portfolio entry. So some questions to think with this week are, what is walking? What does walking do to research and pedagogy? What is meant by research creation? And how might this be related to pedagogical documentation? How might pedagogical documentation and walking as method be in conversation with the social and political milieu of inquiry? So Triggs writes that seeing requires our bodies um, rather than just our field of vision. So we're thinking here beyond a sole reliance on vision in walking. So considering walking in relation to pedagogical documentation, we can think of where um, these processes of inquiry might be a search um, for the poetry of place and how these methods are never neutral. As I walk, um, as a settler on Indigenous land, my steps are weighted with colonial tensions and contradictions. So as we read last week, walking with children in nature is not an innocent act um, that is so often portrayed as. So then how do we construct and think with methods that are permeable to the socio-political histories and presences that live here? So conceptualizing walking as artistic thinking and practice um, as a methodology that's entangled, um, where meaning is made in doing and research is an act of creation with the world in motion. So thinking that these processes and practices are porous and moving with and where learning is um, a participation in the world within living systems where learning spaces are co-constructed with the ecologies in which they're situated in. So then methodology is a response um, to these exchanges to a set of relations and flows and intensities within these places. So thinking again of relational aesthetics, where research and pedagogy might be thought of as a work of art that becomes meaningful, not because of a supposed claim to truth, but through relations, interactions, exchanges, and encounters. So Davies writes that encounters are where each is open to be affected by the other. So in this meeting place between at least two components, there's a space between where if each is open, something might happen. An openness um, not to fully understand the other or consume it into the same, but rather to meet in the space of difference and hover here in this vulnerability. So attending to the ethics of being in this middle space um, is not an act of empathy or understanding against the backdrop of myself, but rather getting close to reshaping and responding in the midst of unknowability. So when we think about an encounter, it's not necessarily a good or bad thing, but something that provokes us to think and feel. Um, where a capacity to act is altered. So Anna Singh um, writes that in these spaces, there's a need for precarity. And precarity is the condition of being vulnerable to others, where unpredictable encounters transform us and we're not in control even of ourselves. And she goes on to further say that learning through experiencing um, and encounters is something that's not done um, by enacting blueprints. And I think this is an important component to think with as teachers and researchers um, that we're not setting up particular lesson plans or prescribed blueprints for encounters, but rather being open to something unpredictable and in the moment. So attending to an encounter is to pause, to linger with, to dwell in and take time with, according to the Sinikajibo kind of culture. So when we think about an encounter as a moment of meeting where things and forces human and non-human beings come together in spaces of difference, this requires something very different pedagogically of us. Um, 
It's unlike a recognition, an encounter disrupts the representation of something always already in place, our habitual way of being and acting in the world. Um, so as we consider what happens, what is it in motion, what forces meet, touch, and attend, open, and respond to, um, we can think deeper about our relations with place and with others. And this is according to um, the Material Encounters text. So instead of planning or expecting, an encounter um, looks for the not yet known. It's marked by a sense of not knowing and a hopeful waiting. So in an encounter, there's a possibility to affect and be affected by. And um, when we're thinking about affect, I think it's important um, and actually helpful to draw on Deleuze, uh, Deleuze's work. Um, so Deleuze and O'Sullivan say that the affect, affect is the effect a given object of practice has on its beholder and on its beholder's becomings. And Woodward and Leah go on to say that in this sense, affect is more than emotion. Um, it's the medium through which, which bodies sustain and transform each other. So um, thinking then to walking as a method of research and pedagogy, Thrift writes that walking as an art practice is a way of reminding the self that perceptions are made before conscious awareness of a particular sense and maybe also may also mobilize new structures of forethought out of which um, can arise new ideas. So in particular, by means of walking, we consider the sustenance provided by perceptions to access the social world of relational aliveness. Um, so this thought of relational aliveness is also highly necessary in our work in pedagogical documentation. So when we think about pedagogical documentation, um, we're not necessarily thinking about it as a process of evaluation um, or an objective um, observation of children's meaning making, um, as we've discussed previously. But this rather is a way of telling a story of inquiry that may not necessarily follow a beginning, middle, or an end, but it invites a prolonged narrative that shifts and moves in multiple ways. So there's no ending of an inquiry project. It's meant to linger and move with and reform into new forms. Um, and I think um, sometimes the most impactful pedagogical documentations are those which highlight one sm seemingly small but powerful moment. Um, so drawing on some of the readings that we've already done and some of the conversations that we've had, um, methodologically thinking about artography, um, we can also think about how these concepts might inform our pedagogical documentation. So as we've spoken before, we can think about our pedagogy as a practice that thinks between research, um, the arts, and our relations with children, place, and material, where we consider meaning as an exposure that is never yet known. So in pedagogical documentation, again, we're not seeking to relay exactly what happened, but rather create um, meaning as an exposure that is not yet, that attends to the what if. So a process that attends to concepts in the making. So what are we looking for in pedagogical documentation? We're not looking again for particular answers, but more so we'll be gathering photos, videos of artistic processes, which highlight particular areas of intensity, or as McClure writes, moments that glow and where something in the world forces us to think. That's borrowing from Deleuze. So revisiting photos and videos to tentatively settle into moments that shimmer and draw our attention in ways which produce new theorizations about our relations with material, with children, and with place. So here the role of the teacher researcher is to provoke and sustain a curiosity in something. Um, while also considering that it's not only about the child here, but also asking ourselves, what do we wonder? What is inspiring? What are the moments, pauses, and tensions of the inquiry telling us? What themes and metaphors are emerging here? Um, and that these wonderings will frame the ongoing emergence of inquiry as we assemble and reassemble ourselves in relation to places um, in ways which provoke further questions to enhance and sustain our pedagogical encounters. And this is where curriculum is made 
in the doing. So pedagogical documentation is not only a method for pedagogy, but is also a method of research. So it helps us to consider how processes of pedagogy and research are deeply entwined and co-constitutive, um, co-compositional with each other. Um, and it's also not um, saying that anything goes um, as um, educators, um, we're not only following the child, but we're making decisions in every moment about what it is that we're attending to, where we're looking, um, listening, and how we are responding. So in this way, research is not reporting on practice, but rather it's something that's done in the making. Um, research is a search and a research for meaning and understanding of what is going on in practice. Um, it has a particular view and an orientation, and it is a creative activity, something that is created or generated um, where new knowledge or understanding might be cultivated.